Let's talk about Louis C.K. Yeah. This is my lukewarm take on the whole Louis C.K. thing. This is not objective. This is a subjective impression, and I have to say this because for some reason I get people asking why I make everything about myself. Because I live inside this brain. And this is my podcast. This is my talking into the microphone bit. Fuck off and do your own podcast if you don't like it. You're not, you don't come here for an objective analysis. I can do that, but that's not what this is for. So if you don't know, Louis C.K. is one of the most famous stand-up comedians in the world. And he recently admitted to doing some, I guess, solo sex stuff in front of some female comedians. Some, some female people. Women, you'd call them, really. Uh, and there was a sense in which he force them to watch I suppose he didn't really but there is a sense in which you could say that like not like the you know not like what's his name in the clockwork orange he didn't pin back their eyes with pins or anything but there's a way of leveraging a power dynamic to create these situations and he did that like he says he always asked before doing it but I suspect he didn't wait too long for an answer so that's bad I had a a much more objective article written called if Louis CK is a sex pest does that make him not funny uh, and I wrote that just before he admitted it when the rumors were flying around which they have been for years by the way if you're anyway plugged into this thing you'll have been hearing these rumors for years and initially, well not initially, but after a while it became attached to Jen Kirkman, who is a female comedian. Or a woman. But I didn't worry about that too much because Jen Kirkman said something very unpleasant about Irish people after a gig she played in Dublin. And uh, so maybe I thought, maybe you know, maybe she just likes making up crazy shit. And as it turns out, it was nothing to do with her at all. And all the way through, for all these years I was thinking, well, you know, that doesn't sound like something Louis C.K. would do. Like he's some sort of guy I hang out with at the weekends and I can read his personality from how he holds his beer can or whatever. And now it turns out even people who regard, even people who, who see themselves as his close friends, people like Mark Maron, said they had no idea about these things. Mark Maron. Mark Maron? I don't know how to pronounce that. I listen, I listen to his uh, podcast, but I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sure he says it a bunch of times, I just forgot. And he says he had no idea about these things, and I believe him. I mean, I believe Mark Maron. Why not? I'm going to, do you know what I'm going to do with the pronunciation? I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to use Maron sometimes and Maron and then Maron. Right? So yeah, I believe him. Maron says he asked him one time about it, about the rumours that everybody heard and Louis denied it. And they're friends, you know? And you want to believe your friends because you're friends with them. Like, what's the point in being, having, being friends with somebody if you're going to expose them to precisely the same conditions that you expose your non-friends to? The whole point of being friends is that you believe them if they say things to you. And that was that, he says. Marin says, which is fair enough. Now, of course, what I was really thinking... I wasn't thinking that I know the guy. I mean, I've been following his career for ever since Lucky Louie, which was from years ago. I've been following this guy's career and everything. Right, everything this guy does is amazing. Right? And now, I have to adjust that to everything this guy does minus one thing which is exposing himself to women and playing with his penis. What I was really thinking, I think, is that I respect this guy as an artist and he's done lots of amazing work that I really related to as a fellow human being. Like, a lot of his work is relatable because you're a fellow human being. And we all kind of... If you think... If you're a thinking human being, you're going to go through the same kind of process of questioning your place in the universe and blah, 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 right? And he did all that kind of stuff and made it funny. And I suppose my brain refused to let that level of relation to content latch on to some fairly seedy, sexual, inappropriate behaviour. And by fairly, I mean very, very seedy. About as seedy as you can get without actually touching a woman. Like, think about the worst thing you can do sexual harassment-wise without actually touching a woman. That's pretty much what he did. And I suppose, if you want to look on the bright side, 
he didn't touch anyone, I suppose. I don't know. I mean, Harvey Weinstein, I get that. You know? I had no trouble believing that. Again, because of the rumours they've been going around for 20 years. I mean, people would openly talk about it, you know? A man's a caricature of, of Hollywood excess. Like, before him, there was... I suppose, who would be the Harvey Weinstein from the generation before? Would probably be Don Siegel or somebody like that, would it? I don't know. Not Brugheimer's. No one's... No one's... No one's stuck on Brugheimer's dick. Um... I'd have been surprised if a story came out where Weinstein hadn't penal auditioned some girls for parts in his movies. Parts for parts. I guess at least those girls were getting parts in a big holiday. Uh, holiday, a big Hollywood movie. Hollywood's not a holiday. I guess they were at least they were getting something out of the. Oh my God, he's a horrible looking man. He was married. Did you know Harvey Weinstein was married? That's something you don't hear in any of these things. Christ Almighty! I mean, to me that adds an extra level of WTF about the whole thing. He was married. So all the girls Harvey Weinstein definitely assaulted and apparently raped some of them, and that wouldn't surprise me either. Um, I suppose they were getting parts and so on, and they felt there was some sort of power dynamic at play where if they didn't, they wouldn't get those parts, which is sexual abuse plus, you know? It's full sugar sexual abuse. It's not entirely clear what the, the Louis C.K. women were getting. They got to see his penis... Maybe that's an experience of negative value. I don't know. Although, uh, C. Argento says once Weinstein raped her that it was like... She says he raped her and she's pretty clear about that. It was like he could have sex with her whenever he wanted. Like he broke her like she was a horse. I mean, that's the way she talks about it. That there was a, an element of breaking her. And then he could just... She almost... What? Listen to her talking about it, right? Because I don't want to get into trouble for saying the wrong thing. But it sounds as if she kind of let him do whatever he wanted after the first definite rape like she's broken like a horse which to me is peculiar but it definitely indicates there's some sort of power dynamic going on there and it's definitely a crime as opposed to just being inappropriate that's a criminal act you know what Weinstein did I've heard people suggest that Louis uh, could have like paid for a prostitute or get on a webcam girl site or something. Well, this was probably was before all the webcam stuff, but prostitutes have been around for a lot longer than webcam girls have. And he could have found himself a prostitute somewhere and someone who he could just throw her, like, I don't know, 50 quid and say, watch him do this thing with his penis. But then with these things, I think that that would remove the element of the power dynamic. That might be the whole point of it for him. Like, part of the cake is not so much that you're doing sex stuff, but you're exerting power over some other person. And the most blatant way you can do that is by doing sex stuff. I don't know. Maybe Andrew Dworkin had a point in All Sex is a Power Struggle, where women eventually just gave in. That was her thing. She thought all sex stuff is a power struggle where a man is trying to dominate a woman, and eventually the woman just gives in. Now, of course, any sentences with the word all in them will necessarily be incorrect, but maybe she was onto something. I don't know. Like, I feel like I've... Oh, this is terrible. If you made it this far, by the way, well done. But I feel like I've been drifting towards having at least as much sympathy for Louis C.K. as I have for the girls that he did this thing to. And that has to be not an appropriate reaction from my point of view. So that's a thing that my brain is doing to me for some reason. And clearly I need to work on it, because when I hear this story, I do have the reaction, oh, that poor guy, right? And that can't be... like when I, And I don't have that reaction with Harvey Weinstein. When I hear the Harvey Weinstein stuff, I'm like, what a fucking creep. There's a guy who needs to be in jail, not in some retreatment centre in Europe. He needs to be in a jail because he'd done criminal things. Now, Louis C.K. I suppose, that is criminal, but it's kind of low-level. You know, in the, in the spectrum. But I don't like that it's happening to me at all as a reaction. Like, I'm not one of these... Anytime I hear anybody doing anything wrong, I'm like, fuck that guy. I mean, I try to understand the whole time. I don't have... I don't know. But I have. I've been drifting towards having at least as much sympathy for Louis C.K. as I have the girls, and I'm going to work on that, right? Yeah, we all need stuff to work on. It's because I like the guy. I like his work. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you about how I feel. I'm not going to lie to you about my own feelings. I think he's really funny. Myself and Andrea went to see him live earlier this year, and it was great. It was a great show. No doubt about it. He's one of the best in the world at what he does. Meaning stand-up, not exposing himself to women. Apparently he's rather clumsy at that. But he's really good at comedy. So, to help me 
think about it and process it. I have a rule. I have a system that helps me think about these things. I ask myself, how would I feel about it if it happened, something like this, happened to someone I'd like to see publicly humiliated, right? People I criticize all the time. So let's, as an example, just take somebody like Trump. Maybe you might think Hillary Clinton doesn't matter. Just think of somebody you'd enjoy watching being hu publicly humiliated and how you'd feel about it if you heard this news about that person. And honestly, if I heard this happen to Trump, I would be all over it like a goddamn rash. So I don't get to feel this way that I'm feeling now about Louis C.K. Just because I like him. And I have to work on that. It's, it's very difficult to get out of your own head when inside your own head is the only frame of reference you have ever had. It's difficult, but that's the project that I'm engaged with at the moment. It's a philosophical exercise I recommend to everybody. Not getting out of your head, but a specific thing of imagine like this happened to somebody you don't like. Would you be as full of excuses? And the same with the other way. All the people criticizing him and jumping on him. Imagine this happened to somebody that you do like. So for all these toxic feminist cluster trashing people. I don't know. Who do they like? Do they like anybody? They must have some sort of heroes they look up to. I don't know. But let's say something like that happened to one of those people. You'd, fi you'd find yourself... You'd be mitigating your reaction somewhat. And that's the kind of nuance and the subtlety I like to try to bring to everything. Because otherwise you're just a black and white thinker. Black and white thinkers are not just boring and useless, but wrong. Well, we've been here before. If this all seems new to you, you're probably 14 years old, because we've been here before. Um, I, I'm going to read some of the article I wrote now which will probably never get published because it's been made obsolete. But I'm going to read out two paragraphs from the article about the situation. And I was trying to, like I always try to do in my articles, I was trying to provide a bit of context. And it's not going to make any sense if I pretend like I just came out with it extempore, verbally. So I have to tell you that this was written, right? Two paragraphs and then we'll come back in. If you're old enough... You'll remember Roman Polanski liquoring up a 13-year-old in 1977 to have sex with her. He fled to Europe after the judge in his case changed his mind about a plea bargain. There was, of course, international outrage, but he also had some high-profile defenders, mostly among people he's worked with. He settled with the victim, who's called Samantha Geimer, in the late 1990s for a large sum of money, although she has since claimed that the court case and concomitant media attention did, and these are quote marks, way more damage to me and my family than anything Roman Polanski has ever done. End quote. If you're not that old, you'll remember Woody Allen getting married to Sunyi Previn, who was the adopted daughter of his then-girlfriend Mia Farrow. Uh, she, Mia Farrow, in other words, she discovered the relationship only after Allen co-adopted two of her other adopted children, Dylan and Moses, and she took it very badly. In fact, it's not an exaggeration to say that she made every effort to hurt him personally and damage his professional reputation. There is evidence to suggest that she colluded with a psychologist to encourage false memories of sex abuse in Dillon, and the New York Department of Social Services eventually concluded that there was, quote mark, no credible evidence, ellipses, that the child named in this report has been abused or maltreated, end quote. There's the two paragraphs running the gamut between definitely awful and maybe not so bad. I definitely think that what Lucy O'Kay did is, is definitely in the maybe not so bad camp. And there has to be a spectrum on these things. Like everything. Like, and take violent assault. There's a difference between kicking a guy, you know, and stabbing him and shooting him. All those things are different levels of a violent assault. And to expect the same level of consequence, legal consequence, and public outrage for every single... I mean, it demeans the top level. If you're going to go crazy over this Louis C.K. thing and say, oh, blah, 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 all men this, sexual abuse that, it's all terrible. If you're going to have your highest level of outrage for that, what are you going to do when a Harvey Weinstein case comes along? What are you going to do when someone actually gets raped, which is objectively a worse thing to happen? Like, I'm not saying these girls enjoyed watching Louis C.K.'s penis bounce up and down or whatever. That's not the issue. Obviously, it would have to be traumatic. But you can't say it's the same thing as a rape. You know? You just can't do that. And therefore, you can't 
foster the same level of public outrage. You can't foster the sense that this should be treated as if it were the worst thing imaginable. Or not even the worst thing imaginable, but say the top of the spectrum, which in sexual assault, of course, would be a, a violent rape. That would be the top level of the sexual assault spectrum, and the bottom level would be, I suppose, what George Bush's dad did. He just slapped a few girls on the ass and made a bad joke. I would call that the bottom level of the spectrum of sexual harassment. Because it's definitely sexual harassment, but, I mean, he's not... He's not a menace to society, he's just a product of a different era. I'm not sure what flippin' era Louis C.K. is from that I can't think of the era. I mean, even in a Stone Age, I'm pretty sure guys didn't do that. You must watch now. Oh, good masturbate. Uh. There's a spectrum, and we need to respect the spectrum. I think there's a way back for Louis C.K. And I don't, I can't see Harvey Weinstein ever coming back. There seems, like, there's, there does seem to be, on the social media ex especially, there's an expectation that there should be a similar level of outrage for all, for well-known rapes and mild sexual harassment. And I think this probably fits into the, this niche feminist agenda, though. Like, I've seen some particularly terrible feminists say extremely stupid things. Like, I, I've actually heard, I've seen a blog post by some feminist who said the Weinstein case and the Lucy case stuff proved that we live in a rape culture. Like, how could you be so stupid? Are you blind? Look around you. Do you see a literally anyone saying, oh, good man Weinstein, well done? Do you see anybody saying, Louis C.K. had the right idea? Literally anybody. In this fucking rape culture you keep shouting about that we're all supposed to be living in. A single person said, hey, hey go on to Weinstein. Yeah? No. Now, this is the worst bit. I reblogged some of this stuff on the Tumblr who said that these cases, like, they're proof we're living in a rape culture. And I reblogged it and I said just what I'm saying now. That it's the exact opposite. That the reactions to these horrible things are proof that we clearly and obviously do not live in a rape culture. Because, I mean, this thing blew up. And she said I was a dick for politicizing these victims to promote an agenda. So, uh, let's just go back on that. The feminist who brought in this rape culture thing unbidden. No one asked her for this. She said, these things are examples of rape culture. Accused me of politicizing the victims. So that's the breathtaking lack of self-awareness these people have. Um, we can't pretend that raping women and exposing yourself are the same thing. It makes no sense. Lucy K didn't touch anyone. He didn't attack anyone. He just, like, he, he did a horrible thing that he shouldn't have done. Right? There you go. He's taken responsibility for it, which means nobody has to go through anything where they have to... Like, he hasn't denied it. He's he's taken responsibility for it. And now, I think, like, it's not my job, but someone somewhere should work out what consequences are appropriate for that and make him pay those consequences, whatever they are. Now, I'm pretty sure one of those consequences should not be a social media screaming feminist witch hunt because that's not going to help anyone with anything. He did a stupid thing and it looks like he targeted vulnerable young women and he should pay whatever consequences are deemed appropriate for that and that's all. I certainly do not think he should be strung upside down next to his mistress in an Italian village square or anything like that. I had a friend once and I'm not going to name his name for reasons unconnected with any desire to protect his identity. But I had a friend, and he was... Well, he, he wasn't sexually abusing women, but he was really close to it. He was close enough. Like, he was certainly gaslighting and, and psychologically manipulating them to get sex from them. And so on. He was doing stuff that I, I had no idea whatsoever about, because I didn't see any of it. And I'm a man, and he didn't relate to me that way. To me, he was just a friend. And he was a good friend, too. I'm not going to lie. Again, I can't... I'm not interested in trying to paint myself better here. I, I saw him as a very good friend. He was always there for me and he seemed to broadly have a sense of understanding about my condition. Most people think I'm an asshole, but it's something else. He was broadly understanding of that and not mo many other people had. Like, he seemed to be willing to put a little bit of extra effort into understanding the way I am. I could hang out at his place for hours, and I did many times, and he wouldn't get annoyed or angry about any of the crazy shit I'd come out with. 
But it turns out he was a very different person around women, particularly women that were definitely way too young for him. I said definitely a lot in this, uh, in this podcast, and I'm okay with that. He was a different person around women, particularly women who were definitely way too young for him. And he would say it to me sometimes, like he was bragging, you know? Like he'd say, see, this girl is into me and she's only 17 or whatever. I just dismissed it. I just assumed he liked him young, you know? And I couldn't complain because I like him young too. I mean, not exclusively young. I mean, a quick, lo- a quick look at my dating history, if you know anything about me. By the way, you don't get to judge me if you don't know anything about me. But if you do know something about me, you'll know about my dating history. And it will reveal to you, if you think about it, that I don't, I don't really have a type. I've dated women who are much older than me. I've dated women who are much younger than me. I've dated skinny women. I've dated not skinny women, and so on and so forth. I think I think my kink is she likes me, to be honest. I think that's my kink. That's my big turn-on. She likes me. I don't really register things like age or body weight or any of the other stuff you might expect. Right? Like, when I was 22, I dated a 45-year-old. And that was fine. You know, it worked out great for both of us. And when I was 32, I dated a... A 19-year-old. And that was fine. And that worked out great for both of us, too. So, I just don't register those things. So, I didn't feel like judging my friend about these things. But then I became close with one of the girls he'd been acting inappropriately with, and I got a whole other spin on the thing. And I found it difficult to believe. Not because I don't believe women, but because I was I knew him. And he was a friend of mine. And what's the point in being friends with people unless you you want to see the best in them, you know? It's not a question of not believing people, you know? I don't think that. So I uh, arranged a few psychological experiments, as I do, because I can't read people at all, so I have to put them through these things. And he did not pass any of them, so eventually I cut him off. And I don't talk to him anymore, and I blocked him on all my social media, and that's it. I don't know what he's getting up to or what he's doing, I don't care. I can't have... I can't have people around me like that. Who are going to deliberately take advantage of vulnerable young women. I don't even like people who take advantage of vulnerable old ladies. Or vulnerable young men. Or anybody. It makes me feel bad inside. And I did not like it. I don't want to have to have anything to do with him anymore. So I don't. And I didn't explain myself. I just cut him off. I ghosted him. Is that what they call it these days? The kids. Ghosted. When I mean, you just disappear off social media and block everything. That's what I did to him. And I do not regret it. One little bit. And I have no curiosity about what he's up to. Don't give a shit. I don't want to know. I want nothing more to do with him. Which is a shame. Because I like the guy. And he was always nice to me. You know? So what now? I don't know. I do think Louis C.K. will come back. I think he's got a way back. I think he'll write a show about it, this whole circus. Because, let's face it, if you know his career, he's kind of been writing shows about this for the last 20 years. So I guess, why not one more? That is not all I have to say about this. But that's all I'm interested in committing to the microphone. So. Normally I say, uh, tell your friends and so on. I don't feel like doing it this time. But I'll make another video at some point and I will talk to you then. And until then, I am out. Not like you.